I work at Barrett Holland in Victoria. How long have you been there? I've been there for four and a half years now. I became fully qualified to start my apprenticeship there. I finished my TAFE, but I am doing uh, Certificate 4 in Automotive Mechanics. My Certificate 3 for my uh, apprenticeship went for three years. So this automotive course of Certificate 4 is probably going to last about three or four years again. When you were at school, did you have any idea sort of what you wanted to do when you were there? Uh, to be honest, not really. I really had a, uh, a lot of, um, I had a lot of interest in cars, but I never really had anything to do with it. So I just did a bit of work experience at Barrett Holland, and uh, yeah, I found out I really enjoyed it. So I started my apprenticeship, and ever since then, I've been loving it. Roman, what's electrical on a car like this? Well, basically anything. Uh, absolutely anything from air intake to your injectors, fuel injectors controlled by electronics. The exhaust is controlled by electronics. Basically, absolutely every aspect of an engine nowadays is controlled by electronics. Is electronics a challenging part of automotive repair? Yes, it's increasingly being quite, in, yeah, quite challenging, and uh, I think you really need to have a, um, a good problem-solving knowledge to uh, figure it out. <laughs> every single day, day in, day out, there's always a car with electronic fault. If not, not just a car, probably quite a few cars. And so, what else? Would you be working on uh, like this here at Wellsville? Like, what else um, I'll be doing brakes. Yep. I'll be doing brakes as well. We'll be checking brake pads, brake discs, all those things inside there. Uh, rebuilding a master cylinder up in here. We've got two of our main modules to be doing at Well Skills is controlled by the electronics here. Firstly, one is uh, the whole external body side of things. So anything excluding the engine is, yeah, we're going to test the electronics and uh, then the engine itself will have a, uh, a segment where the engine's not going to start, then also has a misfire and uh, it's all electronic based. Do you need good computer skills for electronics? Yes, you do. Yeah, I would say you do because you need to know how to use a computer afterwards. Um, even though you use a scan tool to find out what's the problem, you almost every single car manufacturer nowadays runs on uh, all service information and workshop manuals down to diagnostics, all run on the computer. Has yeah. Ballarat Holden supported you? Yes. Like yeah, no, they supported me with money, um, even down to letting me take time off work to do my training. What do you enjoy about working on cars? Everything. I like, um, the, my most favourite thing is actually when there is an electrical fault with a car that I can um, just try and find the problem. It's like a, a mystery and you find out what's wrong. And, I like that because it makes you feel quite satisfied at the end when you found the problem and fixed it. How did you end up here at WorldSkills? Uh, I ended up here at WorldSkills. I've been asked by my trade and tape teachers to uh, yeah, just come and do a uh, regional competition. And uh, I've been asked twice for it. The first time I did, I got bronze in the regional competition. And then the second time in 2009, I got the gold. And now I'm here competing for the gold in nationals. Where do you sort of see yourself down the track? Where would you like to be? Uh, to be honest, uh, it's still a big question mark. I mean, I definitely want to stick with the car side of things, but I'm not exactly sure if I want to specialise or stick to being just uh, an overall mechanic um, with Holden. Or yeah, I'm, I'm really see. I'm not sure. We'll find out after the end of World Skills. See if anything comes up. <laughs> this can be ultimately a life-changing experience. You could get a job offer anywhere, almost anywhere in the world, for uh, doing. They supply all the specialist tools, but we do have to bring all the uh, normal tools along. So I'll show you what I'm over here. How much and, would a toolbox like this be worth? Uh, quite a few thousand dollars. I'm not, how do you say, three or four thousand, I'd say. As you can see, these are all the sockets. Endless amount of sockets, basically, your ratchets. So you've got ones with star-shaped sockets. Um, you also got for a rattle gun, so it's like an air-operated uh, gun that basically undoes a lot of more tighter things. Um, a lot of pliers and uh, side cutters, oil filter tools. There's all my extension bars, speed brace. Uh, yeah, just all the breaker bars and things like that. All my um, spanners. With a toolbox like this, do you sort of keep this thing for most of your career, or you just keep adding to it as you go along? Uh, you keep adding to it, but um, basically this is almost, you could say almost finished, but as um, cars continue on, you always uh, have different tools you have to buy. So in a way, this is kind of like, would be fair to say an investment, Oh yeah, definitely an investment career. If you don't have tools, you don't you can't work basically.